trees because it is early winter. Oh, I see some surprises here for us, the people of Turtle Island. Summer is not the time of storytelling. We must remind the children especially that stories are for winter, for the time when the nights are long, the wind is cold, and the snow lays on the ground, <coughs> when most of the world is asleep. For if we tell stories in summertime, the snakes will come into your bed. So, I am glad to see you here. Although I must say that the prophecies that our cousins, the Lenape, have shared with us of your coming did not prepare us for how many of you have come. <laughs> Today, tonight, I will share a story about mouse and buffalo. We tell stories, especially to our children, to help them learn, to teach them the values, <coughs> their history, and their culture. Mouse and Buffalo is a story about values. One day when the sun was shining in the prairie in a cool little meadow area, a mouse came slowly out from his den, his nest, looked around and was <sighs> relieved. He could crawl under the tall grasses to gather beans and seed for winter because it was that time of year. This was a mouse who took himself very seriously. <laughs> mouse was gathering beans and all of a sudden he hears thump, thump, and a great shadow passes over him. And he goes, oh, not again. <laughs> He looks up and there is Buffalo. Now he's had enough of Buffalo. Buffalo comes and eats all the grass, exposes Mouse so that the hawks can find him. This is not good for Mouse. So Mouse decides, I'm going to stand my ground. Buffalo. And the buffalo goes. <coughs> I hear a noise. <coughs> Buffalo. Buffalo looks down. <laughs> Mouse. Mm -hmm. Buffalo. I was here first. Go away. <laughs> Buffalo goes, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Mouse persists. I am a warrior, Mouse. I say go away. <coughs> Buffalo goes, <laughs> If you don't stop your squawking, I'm going to step on you. Mouse goes, just try. <laughs> okay. And the buffalo brings his hoof down, and he scratches, <coughs> and he stomps, and he, he's going to get that mouse. And the buffalo knows if he stands on the mouse, that's the end of the mouse. The mouse had a plan. Stomp, 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 stomp. Buffalo figured, ah, got him. Done. Go back to eating grass. <coughs> All of a sudden, he gets an itch in his right ear. But of course, being a buffalo, he couldn't scratch it. Shakes his head. Shakes his head. And he hears Mouse go, Buffalo, <laughs> I'm up here. Oh, in the right ear. Oh, are you going to leave me now? Leave me alone? Go to another part of the prairie? Nope, gonna stay here. So Mouse crawls into the ear and he starts chewing. And he starts chewing. And the buffalo goes, <laughs> runs here, stomp, 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 shakes his head. 
Mouse continues to chew deeper and deeper, and the buffalo is in pain. <coughs> and he's running, and he's running here, and he's running there. And finally, <sighs> panting, he stops. And Mouse says, you going to go away now? The buffalo goes, nope. So Mouse crawls out of the right ear and goes around to the left ear and starts chewing and chomping and causing more pain. And the buffalo runs and runs and runs in circles and stomps and shakes its head until finally it drops down dead. Well, Mouse exits very pleased from, with himself and stands atop the <clears throat> buffalo. I have conquered the biggest beast. Looks around. I need a knife. I must dress this buffalo. <laughs> like I said, he was full of himself. <laughs> so he yells out, I need a knife. I need a knife. Nobody answers. Across the meadow, there was Red Fox, who was very, very hungry. And he had been following another mouse. He was creeping up, and creeping up, and thought, I've got him, and pounced with all four feet. Missed the mouse. Then he hears this sound off in the distance. Mama, mama, mama! Mama, mama, mama! He goes, oh well. Tries to find the mouse he had almost caught. And then he hears more loudly, I need a knife! I need a knife! And he goes, well, I'm not having any luck here. Let's see what's happening over there walks over to the buffalo and looks up at this mound of fur and horn and hooves and sees a little mouse up at the top. I need a knife, says the mouse. I have a knife. <laughs> mouse says, Red Fox, if you will dress the buffalo, <coughs> I will share with you. Now, Fox is very hungry. It says, good deal. Okay. So, Mouse walks over to a mound, sits himself down, and watches Red Fox dress the buffalo, giving instructions. Oh, yep, yep, that's good. You can take that down. Now, make sure you cut the meat into small pieces. Okay, so here's the meat, and here are some bones, and other bits and pieces of buffalo. And when Red Fox is all done, he's even hungrier than before. But he's looking forward to some good buffalo meat. <laughs> so Mouse says, good job, Red Fox. You can have a fourth of the liver. And Red Fox goes, oh, yum, gobble, gobble, gobble. He's still hungry. And he turns to Mouse and says, Mouse, with respect, I have done a lot of work. May I have some meat to take home to my little ones? I have six cubs who are very hungry. And Mouse goes, I already paid you. Please? Well, okay, you can have the tail of the buffalo. Red Fox figures it's better than nothing, and then he tries one more time. My wife is so hungry. We've been giving our food to the little kids. Please, may I take something for her? And he and Mouse says, 
How about the four hooves? Take take the little feet, the feet, the hooves. And Red Fox is thinking, you know, I really worked hard for this. There's a mouse. There's a buffalo. I'm a mouse hunter. Pounce! <laughs> and that was the end of the mouse. Now what is the story here? <clears throat> Those who are selfish, prideful, and boastful will not end up with what they expect. Oh.